A lot of talk recently about vaccines, especially with parents, and they're really concerned on what to do with their kids. I'd like to welcome Dr. Claire Haga with the Mayo Clinic to really break this down and educate us to help us out because there's a lot of moving pieces to this, especially about a week ago, there was a measles outbreak right here in the state of Florida. So welcome to the show. Thank you. And let's start out by just really breaking down what exactly is a vaccine. So that's a great question. Um, so a vaccine, basically it's a solution that's developed that contains very um, small amounts of a virus or a bacteria um, that we're able to give as a shot. Um, but the idea is that it gives your immune system a glimpse at what this disease is. So it develops an immune response and basically a memory of what that is. So if you encounter this later on down the road, your body is equipped to be able to fight this infection before you get sick. All right, now when it comes to misconceptions, because there's a lot of them out there, what's probably the most common misconception that you see in practice right now? Ooh, I think one of the most common questions that I get asked is if my child or if I'm sick, if I have a cold, especially because we start talking about a lot of these vaccines during the start of school when germs are back, is am I still able to get a vaccine? Um, and generally what I say, if it's a common cold, if you have um, congestion, then absolutely perfectly safe to get a vaccine. Um, but if it's something more serious illness, if you have a fever, then I would wait um, until you've recovered from that and come back. Now what about, I feel like all parents, they have this day, they go and they take their baby or their toddler to the doctor and there is a series of vaccines. Yes. Do you recommend spacing them out? Do you just give them all at once? Does it make a difference? Are we being overly paranoid? What do you suggest in that? I wouldn't say overly paranoid. I think as a parent, you want to protect your child. So you're doing everything. We're, we're suggesting a number of shots and pokes to your child. So it's, it's absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you and I agree with parents. Um, in terms of the immunization schedule, Absolutely. The first couple years of life, every few months you're going back to your doctor. Um, there is a standard protocol for vaccines, and that is often what we recommend as provider. Um, fortunately, they've actually been able to combine some vaccines, so you're not getting as many pokes at one time. Um, but absolutely, it is the parent's choice. So if you do prefer to um, separate the vaccines, we're able to do that for you. And when you talk about parents' choice, there are a lot of parents out there that are choosing not to vaccinate their children with certain mm -hmm. things. What do you say to that? Like, what do you recommend in that case? Certainly. That, I mean, that absolutely is a question that we get asked all the time. Um, and I think it's really understanding and providing them education of why we vaccine, um, what vaccines do, um, how they protect not only you or your child, but also the community. And um, I think that's a big reason. And so often, you know, we can guide them, provide them resources. The CDC um, is another great resource for parents to look at as well. And then we start out just talking briefly about about a week ago, there was a measles outbreak right here in Florida right. and everybody got really scared. Oh, so what do you do with that? So like, let's say you're a family at home. What should you do? Should you be calling the physician, make sure you're vaccinated? How should, certainly, um, so your pediatrician should have the vaccine records um, in terms of the immunization. So you usually get the first one around your first birthday. Um, and then there's a second, a booster shot that usually is when kids enter school. Um, so that's around four to six, whether it's preschool um, or pre-K or kindergarten, um, that would be that second dose. So by the time that you've received the second dose, you're close to about 97% um, of protected against the measles. Um, the biggest concern and why it's been um, such a hot topic is because of how contagious measles why? is. Um, so, you know, generally speaking, if you or someone had measles, if they were in a room with 10 other people, nine out of 10 of those, if they were not protected, would be infected. And so it can spread rapidly um, amongst different people. The reason that we don't see it as much in the US, fortunately, is because the vaccine has been so effective. And then last but not least, the flu. It's super common. Everybody talks about the flu vaccine, but then everybody breaks down. Well, if it's not that exact strain of the flu, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to get. Is that true? Or? Right. So the flu vaccine, um, there's a lot of research that goes into it every year. And the CDC, they pick about three or four, depending on the vaccine, strains that they suspect are going to be the most likely strains to affect people. Um, it's not a perfect uh, perfect world, but generally 40 to 60% of the time they get it right. Um, so it does offer protection and certainly the flu, although it can be a mild illness for most of our adults, it can be very severe in young children and also our aging population. Or and if you do get the flu shot, can it help just to, I guess, weaken the flu if you were to right. get it or does it not work that way or does it? 
Right, so it can decrease the severity of the flu or the likelihood that you would get it. So absolutely. it makes sense to get. It absolutely makes sense And to you kind of answered this before, but even sure. if you have a little cold, the sniffles or things like that, you're still fine to get it. Yes. Right? Yes. And then people always say this about two or three days later, they start getting sick. Does that mean they just got the flu from the shot or doesn't work that way? So right? that is a, a, a the common question. Um, so you're not able to get the flu from the flu shot. But like we were talking earlier, so the vaccine stimulates your immune system. So that's going to give an immune response. With that, you can have body aches. You can have um, chills or low-grade temperatures, which to some people does feel like the flu. Right. But it's not the flu. So you're not at risk of um, being contagious or passing All right. Well, Dr. Haga, thank you so much for all the information. Go to our website, RiverCityLiveTV.com. We also have some links here. You can go to vaccines.gov or mayoclinic.org, or you could give them a call at 904 953-2272. Thanks again. Stick around. More to come right after this.